I really need to go to the bathroom. Glass starts in one. Ah! Maestro, puedo ir al baño, por favor, yo necesito ir al baño, por favor, es una emergencia, y ya hice mi tarea. Maestro, puedo ir al baño, por favor, le traeré una manzana y lavaré su pizarra. Maestro, puedo ir al baño, por favor, yo Necesito ir al baño, por favor, porque Carlos fue al baño. Él estaba hablando. Maestro, no puedo esperar. Yo necesito ir al baño. Es una emergencia. Maestro, no puedo esperar. Yo necesito ir al baño. Es una emergencia. ¿Por qué no puedo ir? ¿Por qué no puedo ir al baño? ¿Por qué no puede ir al baño? ¿Por qué no puedo ir? ¿Por qué no puedo ir al baño? ¿Por qué no puede ir al baño? Maestro, no puedo esperar. Yo necesito ir al baño. Es una emergencia. Maestro, no puedo esperar. Yo necesito ir al baño. Es una emergencia. ¿Por qué no puedo ir? ¿Por qué no puedo ir al baño? Déjelo, déjelo. ¿Por qué no puedo ir? ¿Por qué no puedo ir al baño? Déjelo, déjelo. Maestro, no puedo esperar. Yo necesito ir al baño. Es una emergencia. Maestro, no puedo esperar. Yo necesito ir al baño. Es una emergencia. ¿Por qué no puedo ir? ¿Por qué no puedo ir al baño? Déjelo, déjelo. ¿Por qué no puedo ir? ¿Por qué no puedo ir al baño? Déjelo, déjelo. Maestro, no puedo esperar. Yo necesito ir al baño. Por favor, ¿puedo ir? No. Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to the first Tiger TV of the school year. I'm Lainey Boger. And I'm Claire Younger. Wow, I forgot about that Puedo Ir Al Baño song. Same, we used to listen to that like three times a week. I know. Um, anyways, I mean, I hope you're, your class all made to the bathroom, Mr. Reeves. Next up, Lainey and I look into all of the hard work that Stuco puts into the homecoming week. Homecoming is a tradition that kicks off the school year spirit. There's a lot of hard work that goes into this week full of fun activities. We could have a lot of preparation. We have to decorate the hallway so each individual grade has the hallway decorations they have to prep. So the Sunday before homecoming week we all have to get into school and we have two hours to decorate our entire hallway. So usually the week prior all the grades are working to like make the decorations to make sure that on Sunday they're ready to go. And then we also have our, our homecoming parade. So the next week, like during Spirit Week, all of the grades meet together and we all make our float. Senior Kate Kozlowski plays a big role in the decorations you see throughout the hallways and at the dance. I'm a co-head of decorations, so what we're doing is we're planning the entire decoration for the dance. And then the morning of the dance, we have all the student council come in to decorate for the night. So, Student council is great at working together as a unit. However, each grade has different responsibilities throughout the school year. The seniors, like me, we have to do the class day and graduation and focus on all of those. But then for the freshmen, they're just focusing on getting their whole entire grade more spirited. But then for the executives of the student body, they're kind of in charge of all of the student council that's separated. This group of students work very hard to promote events and engage their grade. Be sure to follow your student council class Instagram. 
We have our social media accounts, so usually all the different class accounts will post on their social media to say to come to homecoming. For seniors, we usually have a lot of turnout because we have royalty, and then it's obviously the last homecoming that seniors can go to. And then also the student council, the official student council page, will post some promotional events for that. But we also have a committee that's dedicated to the posters and all the promotional events and spirit days leading up to it. The unity between all members of student council is very important to senior Kate Kozlowski. My favorite part is probably prepping all the decorations. It's a lot of time, but it's really fun just to get to bond with your other student council people and create the hallway that you think that your class will love. Blue Valley High has a lot of tradition, and this continues to be shown through our unique homecoming events. We have a lot of tradition at Blue Valley, obviously, so I don't think a lot of other schools do the hallway. We have our float, which I think is really special, and just we're able to go see the elementary school kids. And we have a bunch of different clubs with our float, so I think just all the engagement we get. You may be wondering how the theme of homecoming is chosen. Well, there is a lot of thought and decision making that goes into this process. What we do is we have Officers throw out a few ideas because we have officer meetings on Wednesday and then all student council on Friday. And so on Wednesday, the prior, like last week, I think we threw out some ideas that we thought would be good for homecoming. And then that Friday, we all voted on it. So it's all a voting process. We hope you all enjoyed the dance last Saturday. Give a big thanks to Stuco for all of their hard work. This is Lainey and Claire, Tiger TV. Another thank you to Stuco for all of their preparation and congratulations to the homecoming royalty, Lindsay Cho and Simon Manise. We hope everyone had lots of fun this past weekend. Now, let's talk about you underclassmen parking in the senior lot. Mm-hmm. We got Kelsey and Caroline to watch this lot and keep it under control. Let's see how they did. The senior lot has been an ongoing issue at Blue Valley High, and today we're going to take a closer look to see just how bad it really is. So I know a lot of you probably don't check your emails, but Ms. McNally sent out an email to the entire student body regarding the parking policy. It is, in fact, required that you park in your respective lot. How cute! Two of the exact same car. It's like they're in love. But they're not supposed to be here. This is how it's done. Wait, Kelsey. <laughs> um, that's also how it's done, I guess. Dude, I want to see if this one's Ava. <gasps> yup, it is. Come on, let's get her. What do you think about people parking in the senior lot that aren't seniors? Don't. Yesterday there was a girl on dance team I was like pulling out of the lot and I was gonna let someone go because it was like their turn to go and she was a sophomore and I <laughs> <laughs> just kept going. Yeah. Say that again. JC Hampton, this is your car and I know it is because I saw you right there, the white right there, the Ford, yep, that's JC's car. JC! I challenge you to park in the right lot. It's such a challenge for them to park in the right lot. No senior tag, no doors. What are we gonna do? Bold move on your first year here. These are both seniors. That's so clutch. Look, it's like raccoon feet. Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on non-seniors parking in the senior lot? I think that all of them should move because it's not right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Um, you know anything about the parking situation lately? Uh, no, I've been getting some complaints. Yeah. How do you think you've been doing with those? I don't know. Okay, I guess. Yeah, how would you rate yourself? How high at doing that? I'd say I'm doing all right. Like above a five? Yeah. Nice. That's a good rating. Um, I just want to talk to you today about, you know, like how it's really going. I think I know what this is about. This is about underclassmen parking in the senior lot. You're catching on. Did you know 
in years past, I've written more seniors tickets in the senior lot than any other classes. I don't know if it's a senior car or an underclassman car. All I know is they don't have a hang tag up. What would happen if we started taking care of things ourselves and started booting all of the underclassmen's cars? And they would never leave. Okay, I can handle the seniors getting their parking tags, but can you at least handle the underclassmen in the senior lot? Isn't that what we all want? Well, I'm glad we can agree on at least that for now. Me too. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. That was really good. As underclassmen, didn't you guys park in the senior lot a few times? Phew. Glad they got some people under control. And make sure if you're not a senior, then do not be parking in the senior lot or you will get ticketed. Junior and sophomore lot is back there, and the freshman lot is way back there. Come on, guys. We had to do it so you can do it, too. Yep. Now, a fun segment with all of the sports captains testing their cooking abilities. Let's see if their baking skills are as good as their sports skills. Good afternoon, Tigers. I'm Keegan Murray, and I'm here with Richard Jackson, and we're here with our first ever Captain's Kitchen. So let's go inside and see our contestants. This is Ryan McAleer hey representing volleyball. Yep. Tell us a bit about volleyball right now. Um, volleyball's going great. Uh, we play Westway at home tonight. I guess this won't launch by then, but um, yeah. our senior night's October 12th. Come support us. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and here we have Caitlin Gravett representing tennis. Hey, y'all. I'm Caitlin. I play, I'm captain, one of the captains on the tennis team. And we're doing so good this season. And come out and support us because nobody does. And here we have Noah Summers representing cross country. Uh, I'm Noah Summers. I am the captain for the cross country team. Uh, you should come out and support because, like tennis, nobody does. Okay, so. now get out of my way. Okay, and here's Mana representing football. I'm Mana, Hoko game this Friday. They come and support. Come support. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, and so you guys have 10 minutes now to make your mixes, and then you're going to be able to put it in the oven, and I think it says like 20, 30 rules. I don't even know what it says. But so, uh, yeah, let's get to it, gentlemen and ladies. Go. You guys didn't get us eggs, did you? Bridge. Go, go, go. go, go. go. I got like eight the bowl. I don't know how much stuff we're supposed to do. Ah. All of these. That's too much! That's not 8 by 8. That's not 8 by 8. That's not 8 by 8. Oh, they're right there. Here, give, water. give them their... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a table? Yeah. As you can see, okay. they're struggling per, uh, per my incredibly bad directions. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Wait, wait. Yeah, they're, uh, they're really struggling out there. After that just absolute sheer madness, uh, we're going to welcome into our uh, live studio audience. Okay, Melanie, so you are here representing TSPN. Okay, so how are we feeling? And tell us something about TSPN. TSPN is basically like a sports network where we just document the school sports, and it's really fun, and you should watch it. And go. on YouTube. Go watch it. Mr. Oppel, tell us a little something about band. The band, we are currently learning our competitive show right now. It's called Hand in Hand. We have our first competition next Saturday. Not this Saturday, next Saturday in uh, Blue Springs High School, at Blue Springs High School. Come here. Okay, tell us a little something about FCCLA. FCCLA, we are Family, Career, Community Leaders of America. We basically just do a bunch of like community service work, and right now we are collecting pop tabs for Ronald McDonald House. Okay, now to close up Captain's Kitchen, uh, we have our judges here. Uh, thank you for coming here and uh, 
cursing your stomachs with this food. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can clearly tell which one is which. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's give it a taste test. Wait, didn't it kind of it's breaking apart. It's smell, it's smell test doesn't smell the best. Mm. Is it no. is it it not they're, they're very chewy. It's a little burnt and tastes kind of funny. It's, I'm going back for round two. It tastes like a brownie. So we're going to round two for Melanie now. And better? Mm. I really taste the powder <laughs> of <laughs> the mix. Take a bite out of the second one for reference. Cheers. To Ryan and Caitlin. Cheers. Come in here first. Ryan gets cheers. A lot of people, Do you want to cheers? Cheers. I love, cheers. Being, I love being included. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a lot of chocolate chips I've tasted. See Ooh. what we have here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's just like a that's just like you said gooey. But this is an undercooked batter. You said you like gooey. You said you like gooey. So Camille, after trying both and taking a couple bites, whose is better? Wait, not that I one. think personally, I like this one better. It's one. I like the consistency of it better. It's one. Now, <laughs> the team of Noah and Mana's brownie to Ethan. <laughs> so, what you're saying? It wasn't the best. It really wasn't. Exactly. However, I'm gonna have to give it to the girls. Okay, that wraps up our very first and only episode of Captain's Kitchen. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, with Richard Jackson, I'm Keegan Murray, signing off on Tiger TV. Well, looks like they're all probably better at their sport than they are in the kitchen. They probably could have used some extra bonus points if Miss Smith was grading those brownies. Well, if it was their final, they might have been able to get up to 5% extra credit on it with the new BB policy. What policy? If you have less than five absences or tardies, you get extra credit on your final. Emma and Caitlin talked with Dr. Golden about it to learn more. At the beginning of the school year, Blue Valley High's leadership team created many different ideas to increase students' attendance rates. One of the ideas they created was a 5% attendance procedure. Principal Dr. Golden knows exactly how this new approach will affect students' learning abilities. Students who earn um, A's in classes on average miss about three and a half class sessions per semester. Students who earn F's in classes miss about nine and a half classes per semester. That's over two weeks of school because of our block schedule. So we were looking for all sorts of ways that we could increase um, attendance, attendance rates. And one of them, and it, one of several, one of them was this attendance. Um, it's not a policy because board writes policy, but this attendance procedure that students who miss uh, five or a few classes per semester um, earn a 5% bonus on their final exam. Although this may not be the only positive impact on our school, many families have come forth to present reasons behind the absences advancing the Blue Valley's attendance goal. It would be hard to say that this one piece is, has the positive impact, although we've had more conversations with families already this semester who were more blasé about reporting when their kids were absent than they are now. We get more direct communication from families on absences, which is a bonus. But I think, I think in the grand scheme of things, attendance is better this year. The attendance records, and each week I pull new data, and when I pull the data, I see that our attendance this year is better so far than it was last year. Our attendance last year was better than it was the year before. COVID really did a number on our attendance practices, and everybody in every school that I've talked to and the ones I've experienced, that first year coming back from COVID, we would have hundreds of students showing up late every single day, like several hundred. And now we're down to um, a, a much smaller number. And if I'm in the hallway at 735 or at 835, there are a few students, but they're probably about half as many as I was seeing this time last year. So I think we're seeing some progress, but I wouldn't put it just on that. I would put it on a whole lot of things that we're doing. Dr. Golden believes that if this procedure creates unintended consequences in any way, this procedure may be removed. However, understanding what a legitimate absence is will aid you with your finals. There are going to be students who are gone for legitimate reasons that fall outside the scope of what we're looking at. Like, for example, we're going to hit flu season in a couple of months. Some students are going to miss a lot of school because of flu, and it's not going to count against them. Those, those absences won't count toward their five. But we will have students um, who are absent for reasons that are voluntary and don't fit the guidelines we've set. For example, students who are going to go do college visits. College visits aren't covered by those five. So if you schedule college visits, it could send you over the five if you do a whole bunch of them. That's a choice. Um, if, if I were a family committed to doing a bunch of college visits, I think, well, I don't know if I like this so much. But at the same time, and I've explained this to a couple of families in conversations, if your children are out of school for a week or two weeks for college visits, 
college visits may be important, but I've got data that show that your children are running a greater risk of making low grades in their classes. From an educator's perspective, Latin teacher Mr. Dillon has confidence in this new approach of diminishing absences. I think it, it's a piecemeal approach, right? There's not gonna be any one thing that's gonna make everyone want to come to school. Uh, I think it's just one of many things that we're trying to um, increase attendance. Just um, if just one student every once in a while is like, uh, you know, I was gonna you know, skip today, but I thought about that bonus, so I showed up, like that's a win. It doesn't have to be every student every day, as long as it's some. Hopefully this new rule will motivate more students to show up and be a part of their school community. With Caitlin Gravitt, I'm Emma McAtee, Tiger TV. Did you hear we have five new ELA teachers just this year? Wow, I knew there were some, but I didn't realize there were that many. I know, right? It's crazy, but thankfully their school year seems to be starting off very well so far. Good, I'm glad that they have other teachers to look up to if they need. Me too, and Richard and Keegan got to talk to them all about how this school year has been going for them so far. Many things have changed over the last two years at Blue Valley High School, one of those being the English department. Seven out of the 12 English teachers are either on their first or second years at Blue Valley. One of ELA's veteran teachers, Mrs. McLean, misses past colleagues, but seems optimistic about all the new staff members. It's a little different just in the sense of missing some of my colleagues that I had become really close to, um, but the new hires, um, they're fantastic. I might not know them as well, and it might not be as maybe friendly or laid back as it potentially could be, but I'm sure that that's just a matter of timing. With so many new and new to BV staff members, it can be hard for them to feel comfortable in a new school. McLean was in the position once when she first came to BV, but had help from veteran teachers at the time to ease her transition into the new environment. In terms of guidance, I would say primarily giving me plenty of materials so that I knew exactly what our content was. Um, I also felt like I wasn't having to reinvent the wheel um, in terms of you know, creating every quiz and every assignment out there, they had a great start already. Now that McLean has been here for six years, she has the opportunity to repay the favor of mentorship to teachers like Ms. Harris, who is in her first year at BV teaching ELA 12. Um, so the veteran teachers at McLean at Fields, they're both amazing. Uh, they um, not only were there to help me content wise, but they were there to help me um, just transition into a new school, uh, help me move in. Uh, in June, when I first <laughs> got the job, uh, Miss McLean, she actually helped me move into my room and move in supplies. And uh, she also had a bunch of copies already made for me. And just the kindness was astounding. And it was awesome to know I already had so much support when I just started. Six weeks into the semester, Miss Harris is still settling in, but her emotions are starting to change for the better. Feeling much better. <laughs> I'm not as nervous. Um, I'm definitely still, uh, I feel like, digging my roots uh, and figuring out my way around the school. Um, but I feel a lot better. The ELA department is now in great shape with Harris and a lot of new additions who feel ready to take on new challenges. With Richard Jackson, I'm Keegan Murray, Tiger TV. Wow, teachers really do so much for us. I know they do, but not only them, so do the counselors. Yeah, I bet they do. I mean, especially at the beginning of the year with all the schedule making processes. Definitely, but now let's see what they do all throughout the year. Meet your counselors, Blue Valley. April Hank, Mary Glotzbach, Candy Moore, Chris Hansen, and Kristen Stahlbomber. But what do these people really do? And how did they get here? For starters, they help students with a lot more than just changing schedules. And they had to complete a lot of schooling to get where they are now. Our training is primarily in mental health. Our master's degrees are mostly training in how to address students that are in crisis, that need to process through situations or access resources and support and deal with a lot of decision making. The role of the school counselor has changed over the years as new problems and issues in the world have started to impact the students more. We definitely have seen an increase in anxiety, mental health needs, um, access to resources outside of school, and so our mental health training can really be an asset. We meet students where they're at, we, uh, we enjoy our job because we don't assign grades, we don't dish out discipline, we're here literally as a support to students. So whatever they bring to the table is what we're gonna address on that day and that time. 
with unconditional positive regard and offer that support and take them forward in whatever direction is needed. While the counselors are trained in helping students with mental health challenges, they also value the role in schedule making and getting students in the right classes to help them succeed. Our goal is to assist students in researching course offerings that align with their strengths and their potential career interests or whatever they want to do outside of high school as they transition post-secondary. We also offer information about CAPS, career ready programs, Johnson County dual credit. So there's lots of things that students are could potentially want to pursue during their high school career. So we start that early on and work with each grade level. And so in that education piece is also outlining their individual plan of study. If you need help with anything from your class schedule to your mental health, the counselors are here to assist you. And you can find them in the office, your counselor's card on Canvas, or the counseling card on the Blue Valley High School website. With Austin Cornett, I'm Madison Rusinger, Tiger TV. That is crazy how much they do for us. I know, and Blue Valley, make sure when you see your teachers and counselors in the hallway, you give them a big thank you every once in a while. Have you been going to the football games? Well, of course, that's like one of my favorite things to do. Oh my gosh, me too. Kelsey and Caroline asked each player who they wouldn't let date their daughter. Oh boy, this is about to be a good one. This is who the football team wouldn't let date their daughter. Who would you not let date your daughter? Either Chris Ayala or Jaden King. Callan or Jaden? Cole Rubior. Cole Rubior. Chris Ayala. Chris Ayala. 100% Chris. Oh, Chris. Cole Rubior. Chris Ayala. Chris Ayala. Who would I not let date my daughter? K-Riz. Charisma Nolan. K-Riz. <laughs> Chris Ayala, for sure. John Price. I'm Jack, going Jack, John Ryan. Price. Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan. Jack Brown. John Price. Uh, Charlie, uh, Cole Rubio, Patrick Dennis, uh, Dawson Merritt, Charisma, bro, what? For sure, Charisma. Okay. Uh, Grady Westfall, Jack Brown, uh, yeah, Cole Rubio, um, John Price, Christopher Ayala, uh, Jack Brown, mm. uh, Andrew Power, Chris Ayala, and Warday Woods. Uh, yeah, Warday Woods. Warday and Pombo. Oh, uh, Chris. Chris Aiello. Martel. Uh, Martel. Um, Landon O'Reilly. <laughs> David. <laughs> Crazy. Jack Brown. Jack Brown. Martel. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Don Price. Chris. Pombo. And Max. I forgot Cole, Cole Ruby or two. It's Jack Brown for sure. Oh yeah, it's Jack Brown. Cole Ruby or. Cole Ruby or. <laughs> um, Tyree or Warday. Uh, Derek Claypool. I wouldn't let myself date my daughter either. I wouldn't let a single one of them date my daughter. There's no chance. <laughs> sports content, make sure you check out our new program, TSPN. Every three weeks, they come out with a new episode, catching you up on all of the Tiger sports teams. Make sure to check them out at the Instagram at BVHS underscore TSPN and YouTube at BVHS TSPN. Well, Tigers, thank you so much for joining us today and here on this year's first show of Tiger TV. We hope you all enjoyed it and have an amazing rest of your day. And remember, no school tomorrow. Have, have a great day, day Tigers! Tigers. Billy la bufanda fue a la vale de bienvenida. Billy ya salama de la fiesta. Yo sé. Billy la bufanda es una bufanda. Tiene esparito de tigre. Billy la bufanda.